wife cheated on me with my brother and died after I divorced her. Now 18 years later, I told their son the truth, which led him to cancel his wedding and disown them. And now my family's pissed at me. This is a family conflict that came up recently. I male 46 used to work in the military so I was away from home most of the time. When my then only son was 3 year old I discovered by accident that he wasn't mine. He was my older brother's. It was the most devastating time in my life aside from what I was dealing with. My ex-wife and I ended up divorcing and I cut contact with my brother for years. I was done with him even after my ex-wife who he married the same year of the divorce died suddenly. My parents thought my ex's death was supposed to make everything okay as they claimed she was the one who drive a wedge between me and my brother but I kept my distance. My nephew started reaching out to me and we began seeing each other more often when he was around 15. He has always been told that the fight between me and my brother was about business. My parents threatened to disown me if I told my nephew that his mother was my ex and that I should leave it alone which I did since they said if they had to choose they'd pick their nephew, grandson. My nephew tried to get me to meet my brother so we could talk since my brother welcomed the idea, but I refused. I made it clear to him that he needed to stop forcing a reunion and he respected my wishes. He's now 21 and is getting married on Dov. He sent an invitation which I declined and returned right away. He called to ask why and I said I'm no contact with his dad so I won't come since he will be there. My nephew refused to accept that and came over and started criticizing me saying I'm being unnecessarily bitter and resentful towards his apologetic dad over some business and said he cannot believe how much hate and grudge I keep inside me against his dad. He said I either try to work things out with his dad or he will not be seeing me again. I felt hesitant first but then told him his dad and I don't have a usual beef and that his mother was my ex-wife who his dad messed around with while I was in military. My nephew denied saying his dad and grandparents never told him that. He thought I was lying till I showed him enough proof to get him to change his tone. He left in a hurry and was enraged. I later found out via my parents that my nephew cancelled all my family's wedding invitations, put the wedding on hold and disappeared after he had a huge argument with them and disowned his dad. My father has got very sick after this incident, and my entire family keep harassing me saying I ruined everyone's life with what I did because of my hate and resentment towards my brother. They said they warned me not to talk and now I should deal with the consequences of alienating their grandson, nephew from them. Story 2. I, 32 male have been with my soon-to-be ex-wife, 32 female for 5 years, married for 2. We also have a 1-year-old daughter. Up until this past weekend, we've had a great relationship. As in, I didn't have any major complaints, small things here and there, but any conflict we've had, we've always been able to have a calm discussion and work out our issues. I want to clarify that that I never expected to date, marry a virgin considering the condition of the dating market, nor do I have a specific number in mind for a deal breaker. That being said, in the early stages of dating, she brought up the topic of body count. I'm not saying that I wouldn't eventually have asked, but I never pressed her for that info. She willingly told me her body count was 12, much lower than I expected. She's an attractive woman with a high sex drive, but a high sex drive doesn't mean sleeping around. I didn't question or emphasize it. I take most people at their word and let time shed light on lies. Looking back, that was a mistake. Anyway, my STBXW best friend, let's call her Lauren is a former colleague of mine. Lauren was the one who introduced me to my wife. At the time, we were all in the healthcare field, and all three of us were nurse practitioners. Currently, only STBXW has the same job title. Lauren hit a major milestone, recently, and landed her dream job. Or more accurately put, Lauren saved up enough money to realistically go into business for herself in a field completely unrelated to healthcare. Friday, we all went out for drinks to celebrate and support Lauren, amongst a handful of other people. This part is very important, my STBXW and I do not drink. We're not sober but we both had a crazy drinking phase in college, and we're over alcohol. We both are also educated health nuts. We eat clean, work out regularly, and it's hard for us to not see what alcohol really is, which is P-O-I-S-O-N. Friday would be the first time either of us even remotely got tipsy together, let alone drunk. It's not that we won't drink, it's just isn't appealing. We'll drink on special occasions, and that's not a guarantee. For the duration of the relationship, the handful of times we have had alcoholic drinks, it was separately and far and few in between. It was planned that way, but we primarily have different friend groups. This celebration, we said screw it and let the drinks flow. It's abundantly obvious that our alcohol tolerance no longer exists. We're getting toasted, Lauren is getting toasted, and so is everyone else in the group. But it's a good time. We're not hurting anyway, and we're having fun. 
Lauren and STBXW get to talking about their crazy times in college. I failed to mention they met in college. I didn't hear every single detail, as the conversation was between them but I heard enough to know hookups were consistent and not outliers. She had multiple group play experiences, and what made me really want to throw up is that my wife engaged in pay for play. If we're not sugarcoating, then p tushin Listening to their stories, Dots didn't need to be connected to come to the conclusion her number was way over 12. Obviously, I'm in a bad mood, still am, but I continue to save face because I don't want to ruin Lauren's celebration. The train of thought at the time was I like Lauren, her friends, and her BF. I would feel incredibly guilty for ruining their night. As I write this, I'm not sure how I feel about Lauren. It's not her job to tell me these things about my wife, but she did introduce us, and she knew my false interpretation of my wife. They are best friends, so her loyalty would be with my STBXW, opposed to me. But now that I think of it, I don't think I continue being friends with her. I digress. As the night ended, and we're all going our separate ways, I used that opportunity to question my wife. Not in a pressing manner, but as a happy drunk inquiring. My wife is out of it, mentally, and loose-lipped. She was the majority of the night. I bring up the stories, but at a surface level. After keeping the conversation light and fun, I ask her about her body count as casually as possible considering the context. I didn't have to yank it out of her, and to keep it short, she didn't give or know the exact number, but she admitted the number was more than 100. When the Uber arrived, she passed out on the way home. I made sure she got home through the door, settled, and booked an Uber to my brother house which is only 30 minutes from us. My brother was babysitting our daughter for the night. He has a one of those doors that doesn't require a physical key, but a numeric passcode to unlock the door. Prior to showing up, I texted him letting him know I'm passing out on his couch. I'm welcomed almost anytime, but the heads up text was a safety precaution. It was late, and we love our guns here in Texas. In the morning, fighting a massive hangover, I caught my brother up to speed. He had two things to say. The first is that she strategically lied and manipulated me to alter my perception of her in order to gain an outcome in her favor. This was a conclusion that I came to on my own, just not as well laid out as he presented it. The second thing he said, I only partially thought of. He brought it to my attention that if she's that calculated and manipulative, what else is she lying about? Again I came up with that thought as well. This is why I no longer consider her trustworthy, but what he said next didn't cross my mind. He told me, that being said, he highly encourages me to get a DNA test for my daughter, since my wife is willing to lie about fundamental concepts, and her word can't be taken at face value. In that moment, I felt sick, well sicker, with that thought, and the amount of alcohol I had the night before, I literally threw up all over his floor. To speed this story up, I took my daughter home, and confronted my wife. She confessed to lying about her body count, apologized profusely, and laid out the waterworks. I expressed anger and hurt, but I haven't mentioned divorce or a paternity test. Divorce will inevitable happen. I'm planning to begin searching for a lawyer this upcoming Monday, and to schedule a meeting a SAP. I'll also get a paternity for my daughter to verify if she's indeed mine a SAP. I haven't relayed any of this to my STBXW. The way I see it, the smartest move is to contact a lawyer first, find out the results of the paternity test, and follow what my lawyer says as we wait for and receive the results of the test. I have no idea how long either of this will take. I'm no law expert, I've never been divorced, nor do I have anyone close to that has been divorced. I'm going to stay in my lane, and be patient for my lawyer advice, and to get the paternity results as that will play a huge role on future involvement for when the divorce is initiated and finalized. I talked to my mother, today, about this and she's adamantly against my plan. She won't interfere, but she is biased. My daughter is her only grandchild. Positive or negative results, my mom will see her as her grandchild, but she knows that I don't share that same viewpoint. She didn't directly call me an idiot, but she did everything but that. So I'm asking Reddit, am I the idiot for planning to divorce my wife when I found I she lied about her body count and slept with over 100 men? Update, I was going to change how I formatted the update. A lot of people complained about my pacing. Some said it was too long, others said it wasn't detailed enough. Here's an idea, click off now if you don't like the way I'm writing this. You literally don't have to read this. I will use AI to touch up my grammar. I know my spelling and grammar is trash. I'll start with the biggest update. I took a paternity test, and the results concluded I'm not the father. This was obviously devastating for me, especially since I've been processing this alone. I haven't told anyone, not even my brother, who is the person I typically confide in. I'm just not ready to have an in-face conversation about this with anyone. 
I genuinely don't have the words to explain the emotional roller coaster that info was, is for me. Now that I know I'm not the father, I'll answer the question that was commonly asked of me, which is what will I do if the results came back that I'm not the father? I have made the decision to not raise her. Paternity matters to me, and my personality is very black and white. She's not mine, and I can't spend my life playing pretend. The only comfort I have from this is that she won't remember me. She's too young, meaning she doesn't have any long-term memories. As for the divorce papers, they haven't been served. My STBXW knows there's a rift in our relationship, but she doesn't know divorce is coming, nor is she aware of the paternity results. She'll find out the same day when the divorce papers are delivered. Luckily for me, she has virtually zero chance of squeezing alimony out of me. The combination of the duration of our marriage, a prenup, and her earnings, she won't get a dime from me. Getting my name off the birth certificate and all the legal BS that comes with that might be a different story but I'll just have to see how the deck falls. Regardless, I won't be a parent, even if I'm forced into child support. As for the current state of my relationship, my wife admitted that she intentionally deceived in regards to her lying about her body count. This was early on. She knew next to nothing about me, what I thought about the subject, and how I'd react. All she knew is that she liked me and really wanted to see if we could become something. I know for a lot of people, they would take that answer as a valid excuse for lying. I just see it as pathetic. There's been a lot of crying and begging on her part for me to have a meaningful conversation with her. I'm just not interested. She's dead to me. I don't care who she cheated with, for how long, or for how many. I don't care what other lies she has told me during our relationship. I don't care if she's genuinely remorseful or if she's just putting on a show. All I know is I'm ready to be separated from both legally and physically. One thing I'm really struggling with is whether or not I want to nuke her life. One big thing I can do is get her fired and make finding work extremely difficult for her. Her job means everything to her. When we started getting serious and were discussing marriage, I told her we can be either traditional or modern, but we're not combining different aspects of both. So we split everything 50 over 50, have our own bank accounts and one account together for bills. She chose this dynamic because of her job, because it's her passion. I'm glad she did, as it is making separating a lot easier on me. I can destroy her reputation socially without it being considered defamation. I'm an emotional anchor for her, I can use that to my advantage. And if I'm being honest, the only reason I'm contemplating restraint is that she is going to be a single mom soon, and that's going to be a huge adjustment for her. The better mental and financial shape STBXW is in, the better position she'll be in to provide a stable life for her daughter. She might have to take on a less demanding role anyway, as I'm currently still the primary caretaker of her daughter. I put more effort into parenthood to STBXW. I have a flexible work schedule, so her daughter is with me during the work week. Perks of having your own company. I would wake up in the middle of the night to bottle feed her. STBXW didn't breastfeed, and I was just an overall enthusiastic parent. I was happy to do any and everything. How could I not? I had a 50% me human that I got to watch grow up. I didn't want to miss a second. That's the stuff that destroys more than anything. Anyway, that's what I have for now. If I do a second update, I'll put more time and thought into it. I'm just blabbering away right now. Story 3. I'm a 34-year-old guy, and I have a 16-year-old stepdaughter. My wife is 31. In high school, my wife was a popular girl stereotype. Pink, blonde chunky highlights and her brown hair, this was the mid-late 2000s. She was on the cheerleading team, had lots of friends and boyfriends, was well known and liked. She was basically the living embodiment of the picture-perfect girl from those cheesy 2000s high school movies. And then she got pregnant. When she was 15, she had her daughter. She doesn't know who the father is, and any potential fathers for the girl up and left way back when. Her daughter is recently 16. I never wanted kids, I found them annoying. But I fell in love with my wife and got married when she was 20 and I was 23 after dating for two years. We hit it off, and I married her and decided to suck it up around the kid. I never planned to absolutely love being a dad to her specifically. Kids still annoy me, but my daughter, stepdaughter technically was different. She was quiet, nerdy even at a young age. I married her mother when she was 5, and we clicked right away. We went on daddy-daughter dates every weekend. I played dolls with her, let her paint my nails and do makeup on me. I drove her to and from school in my cop car. We even did daddy-daughter duo costumes for Halloween. Over the past two years she's developed a darker dress style. I don't know what the proper subculture of her outfits are, but according to her she's dressing like a horror game protagonist and a monster high character. Purple is her main color she incorporates into this specific aesthetic blend as she calls it. 
I don't get it. But maybe that's because I'm a man in my 30s, I don't know. She likes ghosts, tarot cards, vampires, zombies, aliens, creepy Victorian dolls. I don't get it. But also I don't care because if it makes her happy so what? She's also an introvert, and prefers to play games on her computer or read fantasy occult novels rather than hang out with other teens her age. She has friends, so I'm not too worried about her being completely withdrawn. I'm just glad I don't have to drive her around since she only has a learner's permit currently. My wife hates this. My wife always wanted a girly girl. Pinks and pastels and flowers and all that. She wants our daughter to get a boyfriend, be more social, be a cheerleader like she was. Which, in itself is valid. I get it. I'm sure most every parent has preferences for what they want their kid to turn out like, and some disappointment when they stray from that fantasy is valid. Some, my wife will constantly takes and hides my daughter's darker room decor. She constantly gets pastel dresses for our daughter, tells her to wipe off her dark eye makeup, tries to set her up on dates with jock types from my daughter's school, and convince her to sign up for both school and summer activities like cheerleading or volleyball. I could have put up with all of that, I really could have. But a few weeks ago I woke up to my wife finally hitting her breaking point. I woke up in the middle of the night to my wife screaming and having what I can confidently describe as a borderline meltdown. She was crying and saying all she ever wanted was a normal daughter who likes pink and is a cheerleader and has a boyfriend and will give her grandkids. I had to drag her out the hallway after 30 minutes of this. I kept thinking it would stop, but it kept going on and on. My daughter was just staring at this whole thing in the doorway of her room. What caused this meltdown from my wife? My daughter dyed purple over the blonde streaks, highlights my wife had forced her to get in her hair, which wasn't even breaking a house rule, as my wife and I have both told her she can do whatever she wants with her hair as long as she doesn't stay in too many towels. It's been weeks, and my daughter won't talk to her mom. My wife is still up with her antics, but now it's in overdrive. Every day she brings home some type of trendy clothing in pink or pastels and tries to give it to my daughter. My daughter is getting fed up and stays in her room all day, and has confessed to me she can't wait for school to start back up in a few weeks so she can get out the house and be with her friends again. I don't know what to do. I feel like I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. I don't want to side with anyone in this situation. I understand my wife wants a daughter who she can relate, and my daughter wants a mom who understands her. I don't know what I can or should do. I need help. I need advice. Update. It's been about a week since I last posted about how my wife was having a meltdown over how my daughter chose to dress. Two nights after I posted, I sat my wife down and very bluntly asked her what exactly the problem was. She kept saying she just wanted a daughter who was similar to her. But after I kept asking she broke down and admitted the real reason why she was having her meltdowns. My wife feels that her daughter is the only way for her to have more family in the future. She's estranged from her siblings, her parents don't speak much to her, and all of her friends from high school stop talking to her after her pregnancy. She wants a family back, and she's hoping that her daughter will marry a nice boy and give her grandkids so she can have a family again. She said she never brought up having more kids with me because she figured I'd be against the idea. I don't know how I feel about having more kids with my wife, but it certainly won't happen now. So my wife is in therapy to try and get her to realize that she can't just view my daughter as a way to create a family. She's doing well so far, but it's too soon to really tell. My daughter is also in therapy. She's been in therapy since she was a kid for bullying issues, but now her therapist is trying to focus on the meltdown situation with her. My daughter actually seems relatively unaffected by this whole situation other than a little annoyed, so I don't know if that's good or not. I took my daughter to Hot Topic for some back-to-school accessories and then took her out to eat, just the two of us. She's still excited to go back to school. She misses her friends and her clubs. My wife and daughter have started talking normally again. They had a long talk, which I was present for, where my wife apologized for being so pushy and extreme with her wishes. My daughter was well receptive to this talk and seems to be back to her normal self. I am keeping an eye on both of them to be sure. My wife is doing her best to understand my daughter's interests. Last I know the two were watching some slasher TV show on Hulu as a way to bond, and it appears to be working. There isn't any bad blood between the two. I know things are soon, and that things can change, but so far everything appears to be smoothing over pretty well. Thank you for all the advice, harsh and gentle, that I reviewed through my original post. It definitely slapped me in the face as what could happen if I didn't get both of them help and make them talk it out. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you really like our videos, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Have a good day.